welcome back to my channel. I have some really exciting news to share with you guys. On June 21st of this year, 2015, I officially participated in and completed my first triathlon. I have been so excited to share this video. I wanted to make videos all throughout the training process, but what happened was I was trying to wait until um, we got some other news so that I could kind of share like a life update, what's going on. Um, but it just turns out that I wasn't able to share the other news yet, so I kept putting off the triathlon video. But now that I've done it, I want to share with you guys my experience and what I went through. I completed my first triathlon and I completed it in one hour and 38 minutes, which I am so proud of because I actually put my expected um, finish time to be two hours and 20 minutes. So I finished almost an hour earlier than I expected myself to finish. So. I want to give you a little bit of backstory to how this all came to be because I know maybe it seems random. You probably noticed that kind of on my Facebook page and YouTube and just social media in general, I have been a little more quiet than usual. I'm usually very, very active and very vocal and I just had so much going on and this training took up a very large majority of my days. So to get it kind of started, how did we get to you know, the triathlon. How did that happen? So what happened was that my husband was speaking with my father-in-law and was kind of saying, you know, I miss going to the gym every day. I miss being active. I need something that will push me again. I just need something to work towards. And my father-in-law mentioned to him that he's planning to do a triathlon in Mexico in 2016 and that he was going to start training for one that we had locally. So my husband was like, yes let's do it I want to do that I would love that and somehow I kind of got roped into it it ended up being me my father-in-law my sister-in-law and three family friends or three swimmers two swimmers that my father-in-law coaches on the swim team here in our town but to give you a little backstory I have never done cycling ever um, the most bike riding I've done is as a child I rode bikes and um, at the gym I've done the little you know seated still bike but I've never done you know racing I've never done cycling on a race bike. We started biking and it was a totally new experience to me but it turned out it was something that I was really good at because I have really strong legs. So I found that I excelled at the bike and I did it every day and I went further and I went further. And every day pretty much we practiced like 14 to 16 miles on average, like on our average typical day. So the biking came pretty easy. That was back in March. Um, and then I would say I started getting in the pool around the beginning or middle of May. Now swimming has never been my thing ever. So I got in the pool and I kid you not, I couldn't even go 25 meters without stopping. I made it one time across the pool before I had to stop and take like a two minute breath. It was pathetic. It was horrible. It was so bad that every day on the way to the pool I got such bad anxiety and I got sick to my stomach and I hated every second of it and I just kept telling myself you have to get better. There has to be a way. This has to become something that you somewhat enjoy but I just couldn't see that happening. In a triathlon the swim is 400 meters long or sometimes 440 meters long depending on the race you're doing. So we swim in a 25 meter pool so that's 16 times back and forth and I practiced and I practiced and I went every day and practiced and I didn't really get great but I got better. Um, and then I'd say about three weeks ago I went for the first time and did open water swim which is swimming in the lake which where we would be which is where we would be doing the actual course for the race we went and did a run through of the race i got in the lake and i just completely panicked i had a major panic attack i'm still not really sure what triggered it i knew i was anxious about the lake but when i got in there i felt fine my mind felt fine i was like this water is very clear i like this you know it feels good it's not too cold not too hot 
But I think what happened was I was swimming with a bunch of swimmers and I'm very competitive so I jumped in too fast and tried to just go right into it without kind of acclimating myself to the water. And I had a panic attack. I swam the whole 400 meters, but I don't know how. I couldn't tell you for the life of me how I got back to the beach. But I just, I, I couldn't get my act together. So after that, I felt a little panicked about doing the race. I felt panicked about getting in the water. And I just kept telling people if I could just get through the swim, this race would be a breeze. Um, and then I'd say about a week ago, we went back to the course. And instead of pressuring myself to swim the entire course, I just, I sat in the water. I, you know, I got underneath my goggles. I looked around. I took a few strokes. I swam back and forth. And something about doing that, I just felt completely at peace. It was in that moment that I was like, this is not bad I can do this and my mindset about the race went from being anxious and scared and nervous to just excited and ready and energized and it was just the most incredible feeling so that was the swim and running I do not run I don't practice running because every time I do run I get excruciating pain in my knee so I knew that come race time I wouldn't be prepared for the run but I just kept telling myself a run isn't gonna stop me from doing this race the run I've done a million times in my life even though it's painful I'm gonna get across the finish line whether I'm walking whether I'm crawling I'm gonna finish the race the run isn't gonna be what's gonna keep me from finishing so race morning came, we got no sleep at all, and we were up at 4.30 in the morning and at the race site at 5. Our swim didn't start until 7.39 exactly. But we got to the race site, we um, got in transition, got our bikes set up, got our towels set up, and just being there was the most exciting thing. Being around so many athletes who had incredibly fit bodies and you knew that they were about to go through something that was just gonna like test them and you saw people of different shapes, different sizes, people with disabilities, just being in that energy was incredible. So we got there, set everything up, you know, got some swimming in, and I felt a little dizzy, so I went and had some, some snacks, and then we got our tracker on our ankle, and then it was time. We had to wait in the water, because we were the last wave as first timers, and we had to wait in the water for about 40 minutes, and I can tell you that that is the most, it's like one of the most insane feelings you will ever feel as a first timer doing a race like this. You're just waiting, you're so anxious and you're seeing everybody go before you and you're in the water and you're ready to go but you can't go yet because it's not your turn. She's in a green hat. All right, bye. Peace. The race started, the swim went way better than expected. I wasn't worried about the swim at all, but I had originally planned to let people go in front of me and me stay back. That way I didn't have to worry about getting kicked in the face or being, you know, swam over. I just wanted to take it at my own pace and do it in a way that made me comfortable. That plan did not work at all. It did not go any any way according to what I plan. Um, if you don't know anything about triathlons, the swim portion is considered the most dangerous. It's considered kind of the most hectic because there are so many people right on top of each other. People are swimming over you, people are grabbing you, people are swimming under you. So it really did, that's what it was. I was swimming and I was having to look up to make sure that nobody was kicking me in the face and I had people grabbing me from behind. But I just kept focusing, like focus on your pace, focus on your breathing, and I did okay. The only trouble I had was that I did kept, you know, bringing my head up to see where people were in front of me, and then I would go to get a breath on the side and I would drink water. Novices, are you ready? Come on now, a little bit more enthusiasm, a little more fired up. Are you ready? All right. We thank you for making the Heartland Triathlon your first triathlon, if it's your first one ever. 
So here we go. Let's count it down. And five, four, three, two, one. Go, 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 go. See, she's going to take the walk approach to some of it. There they are. Now can officially be called triathletes. So towards, I'd say about three-fourths away in, I started to get a bit tired. And um, there was somebody panicking in the water, just legit panicking, crying out of breath. And the lifeguards were coming to save her. And it kind of just seeing that made me realize, like, that was you not long ago. And you are okay. Like, you're right there. The finish is right there. So I got out of the water, ran to transition, put my shoes on, put my, um, what did I do? Put my shoes and glasses. My shoes and my sunglasses. Make it up! And I got on the bike. Bike is easy peasy for me. It's an easy course, so I just rode. That was fun. Um, but what I didn't expect was somebody actually took my electrolyte drink off of my bike. I guess somebody thought that it was their bike while they were in transition. You know, you're so tired from the swim and you're not really thinking clearly. So I think they took my drink and maybe you know, drank a little bit and then realized this is not mine and they put it on the ground. I didn't realize because you go through transitions so quick because you want to get out as fast as possible. So I did not have my electrolyte drink at all. So from swim to the end of the bike, which the bike is 14 miles, I did not have any kind of drink to repair my muscle to put um, the electrolytes back in my body. So that was a little tough. Your dad's got about a minute and a half on you. Go, Tara. space on my memory card so if we're at a different angle or anything that is why so running after the bike if you have ever done it then you know what I'm talking about if you have not done it then you might not know that when you get off the bike and you try to run your legs feel like a ton of bricks attached to your body you might be moving faster than you think you are because you really feel like you're going nowhere like your feet just aren't moving it is so bad um, but by the time I got to the run, I was pretty darn beat, I'm not going to lie. I was tired, somebody had taken my drink, so I hadn't had anything to drink the whole time. Which isn't, you know, too unusual. I'm glad that I, I train the way I do because I don't drink much when I'm working out anyways. I've told you guys that before. Um, so likely I would have only taken a few sips of my electrolyte drink to begin with. So I kind of was prepared for that, but I was very tired. I was very kind of out of breath. And at that point, I felt a little bit like I needed to be sick. Um, but I didn't so I got to the run and the way that our course was laid out is it was on a downtown circle which had five different spokes that go to five you know five different parts of town and we had to run up and back each one and the run is three miles or a 5k so I got you know the first mile I'd say it took that long for my legs to get warmed up and to feel like they were actually actually attached to my body and I was making progress.
by the time I got to the second mile, I felt warmed up. I was moving a little quicker, but that's when my knees started to give me problems. So my knees started to hurt. By the time I got to the third mile, I was in so much pain. I was in excruciating pain. There was a point when I almost started to cry. Like I felt my chest tightening up and I was choking up and I was kind of like, <laughs> and I was like, oh damn, like just cursing. It hurt so bad. I was skipping at times. I couldn't even put pressure on my knees. So I was literally skipping off of my opposite legs. Um, and then I just told myself, don't cry. Like you're almost there. You're almost to the finish. I got in a shaded area that gave me a little bit more energy. And then whenever somebody told me the finish line is right around the corner, I just, I got there and as soon as I saw the finish line, I booked it. I sprinted to the finish line and it was exhilarating. It was the most incredible feeling to pass the finish line and see people waiting there, see my husband waiting there for me, cheering me on. And, um, you know, during the run, like I said, I didn't have anything to drink. So every time you come back from a stoke, I think that's what they call it, stoke. It's kind of like a bicycle, stokes. Every time you go um, between one, they had people with Gatorade and water. So every time I got to one, I took the water, I took my tri suit, threw the water in because cold water, once it goes down and reaches like the artery in your leg, it wakes you up, it kind of shocks your body. And then I, you know, threw Gatorade in my mouth really quick and threw the cup. But I finished the race, everybody, you know, was there waiting for me because everybody started either in a different wave than me or my husband and father-in-law, they're just quicker than me. Hanzo. Hanzo. Not head. You caught him up, didn't you? Oh, there he is. I got him. Hey, Dad. Coming in now. There she is. Tara Creel and Kathy Stiles all coming in. From Pensacola, Nikki Bales is in. Coming in right now. So, it has been really, I just, I feel like I could talk about it all day long. It feels like the most incredible experience. My husband and I are now addicted. We fell in love. We want to keep doing them. I found something that I'm really, really passionate about once again. I'm thankful for my programs that I do at home because on days when I couldn't hit the pavement, when I couldn't be outside because we live in a really rainy place, I was able to do my workouts at home. Um, so yeah, that was kind of my first triathlon experience and I wanted to share it with you guys because it's something that I put so much time into and something that I enjoyed so much and I know that there are some of you that are considering picking up these kind of, I am over it, now my battery died. But moving on, I wanted to share this experience with you guys because like I said, you know, I went into something that I had no experience with. Um, like I mentioned, I've never done swimming, I've never done cycling and I came out finding something that I was really passionate about, something that I enjoy doing my husband that links us together, and something that I'm really good at, which is cycling. And that's why I always say on this channel, you know, exercise is not something that you're just like, no, I don't exercise, it's not for me. You have to find what works for you and you have to go with that. Not everything, exercise is not a one size fits all thing. You have to find what works for you and you have to go with it. I went into this triathlon just wanting to finish. All I wanted to do was finish. And I ended up finding something that I really enjoyed and I didn't just finish it, I crushed it. And even more so, like when I started training, I remember I would go on a 14 mile bike ride and I was out for the rest of the day. I could not move for the rest of the day. All I wanted to do was lay down and watch television. Um, and I used to tell my father-in-law, I don't understand how I'm going to be able to do three different events when just one event wears me out. And then when it came to, you know, I got to where I could bike the 14 miles and then run only a mile and a half. And I was like, I'm never going to be able to do three miles when I can't even do a mile and a half. How in the world am I going to work up to three miles? So at the beginning, it seemed so impossible. It seemed so 
out of my reach and every day I just progressed and every day I pushed a little harder and every day I kind of changed it up and made it exciting and I ended up doing all three events which I had never done before. I didn't even know my body was capable of that but I was so set on finishing and on completing it and I knew deep down that I could do it if I really set my mind to it and I did so I encourage you so highly maybe you don't want to go out and do a triathlon and that is okay but there are other things that you can do there are lots of different options so maybe look in them and start putting a goal in your mind something that you want to work towards I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about my experience I want to do a first timers kind of tips and what I learned um, video. It would probably be a little shorter than this. So if that's something that you guys would like to see or if you would like to hear things that I researched and read up on to prepare me for my first triathlon, I would love to do that video for you. I can't wait to share that with you and tell you guys where my life has been and where we're going. We just have so many things that are coming up and so many things we're doing and our family is just growing and loving each other and I'm just I'm really happy and I'm on a high from this triathlon and I cannot wait to continue sharing more with you guys so I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one bye